Rivals. So we are recording. Good morning, everybody. It's nice to see y'all. Appreciate you hanging with me this morning. We're talking today about spring cleaning, home office edition. Y'all excited about this one? Slightly, slightly excited, slightly nervous, a little bit of, a little bit of both, maybe. <laughs> so I want to cover. Um, what am I covering? I got, I got several different areas that I'm just going to challenge you to think about. Uh, these are all areas that I manage very tightly, very closely, and uh, especially coming around every year to the new part of the year, I like to kind of revisit all these and just do a nice kind of clean up and refresh of that area because it's just nice to get it cleaned up. And then once you can get it cleaned up, then you can maintain it. So we're going to talk about several different aspects of home office. Uh, and then I'm also going to be hooking you guys up with some, I'm going to show you, I've, I've gotten a lot of questions about how do I, how do I track and maintain leads? Uh, how do I track and maintain the social media analytics, like website analytics, all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to show you kind of my system for how I keep track of what I keep track of, because there's, um, there's so much that you can keep track of. Like there's so many numbers out there, but which numbers are the right numbers and which ones really matter? I don't, I don't track everything. I just track the stuff that, that really matters. So I'm going to show you what I track and how I track it and why I track it. And then uh, I'm also going to give you guys the templates that I use. So I, I do all my tracking for clients and website and all that stuff in Microsoft Excel. So I'll, I'm going to hook you guys up with those templates so you can use them if you'd like to use them or you can duplicate them and make them your own. But uh, I'm going to show you how I do that. So we're going to cover that today as well. So let's just dive right into this. Uh, I'm going to take this by segments. So we're going to talk about your workspace, your computer, your phone, your email, business forms and financials. We're going to talk about client tracking, and then we're going to talk about leads and analytics. That's our today. So seven core topics, and we're just going to dive right straight into all of them. So the first one I want to talk about is your workspace. Now, some of these things I'm going to bring up are going to be pretty simple, but it's some of the most simple stuff is usually the stuff that gets overlooked. So, and some of the times, some of the most simple stuff is the stuff that can be the most distracting. I, I highly believe that uh, clutter in your space is clutter in your mind. And if you have a lot of stuff going on around you visually, it affects your focus and it affects your mind and affects all things up here. So let's talk about that workspace for a second. Uh, how many of y'all have a dedicated workspace in your home? Tasha does. Jackie, I seem, you seem like you're always in the same spot. So Jackie, you have a dedicated workspace, I imagine, don't you? Yes, yep, I you. do. Yep. Uh, Kat, I think you're working on yours, correct? Uh, it will be. In it will be. So this is going to kind of set you up with what you need, because I know you're transitioning back into your house. And yes. then Jamie, in your new house, I, I, I'm not sure if Jamie has her dedicated workspace set up. Um, but the first thing, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to give you a few things that I think are kind of crucial for your workspace. So first of all is, do you have a calendar that you can see? So um, do, you have, do you have something that you, can, that you can see? I like to have a calendar that goes out 90 days. Uh, and so I've, I've, I've done this a variety of different ways. I've done the desktop calendar before. Um, but then I kind of didn't like it because it was kind of always getting in my way. Then I went to dry erase board calendars, which was kind of nice. But then, then you're always having to change out the months. So I've gone to a written calendar, just a regular flip calendar. Um, but uh, I think it's important to have a calendar that you can see. And it needs to be easily accessible that you can be looking and planning out 90 days, looking at what's coming up, um, planning for big events, all that kind of stuff. So having a calendar that you can see. <laughs> workspace is very, very important. The second one is where and how do you track to-do list, hot notes, miscellaneous notes? What's your, what's your process for that? And I'm going to, I'm going to pick on Tasha. What's your process, Tasha, for, for keeping track of things you got to do? What's that look like? Do you have, I, a Oh boy. I have, I have a notebook that I have for each thing, but okay. but it's it is chaotic because I can go from I'll have the list in a notebook, I have it in a calendar, and then I might have a poster board <laughs> with mm -hmm. stickers. It yeah, changes. I, I, think, I think everybody. I don't believe there's a one size fits all approach to a to do list or or a or something that you keep track of your notes because everybody's so different. And everybody, everybody likes to keep track of things differently. Um, what I challenge you with is I challenge you to try to find a way 
to separate your priority list from your to-do list because those are different things. Your to-do list is usually a, a variety of just a whole bunch of miscellaneous things that need to be done that can range anywhere from five minutes to an hour, you know, but just all kinds of different stuff. Your priority lists are non-negotiables that have to get done. So what I usually do is I keep, I keep, you know, running, I, I have a, I have a kind of a large notebook that I keep track of every single day. And this has a list of my priorities and things that I need to get done today and get done this week. So I usually have my things sorted out by day and by week of what my non-negotiables are for the day. Charlotte, what's up, buddy? Nice to see you this morning. Um, and then I also have, I keep a hit list on my desk. This is one of the best things that I ever started doing. I started doing this years ago. And let me, let me explain this. So I always have kind of my running priority list of what I know I need to get done today. And I, and I can work through that list throughout the day to make sure I'm getting the most important things done. Secondly, I have a separate notebook that I keep separately always on my desk. And this is for my hit list. And my hit list is when I'm in the middle of something and um, that random thought crosses your mind, like, oh, I got to call mom and ask her how she's doing today. Or I got to remember to send that form in for my daughter's dance thing. It's just that random stuff, right? And those random things become distractions. And what happens is usually those things pop up when you're in the middle of something. So if you don't do it, you, for, you forget and then it pops up later and you've, it's too late or something. Or if you do decide to go do it, then it distracts you from the priority that you were supposed to be working on. So what I do is I keep my hit list. My hit list is always right here on my desk. And so if I'm sitting here talking to you and all of a sudden this random occasion, random thing pops up and be like, oh, I need to call dad and tell him we have an appointment next Thursday. I can just grab this, call dad after call. And, and, then, and then I go right away from it. And I just took that, that distraction stuck it on a piece of paper and got it out of my way and I can keep focus on you and between the time that I came into my office this morning at 8 30 to get ready for us and between 8 30 and when I started at nine I've already got four things on my list that have just popped into my mind while I'm trying to get ready for the zoom call and so what's cool about this is usually what ends up landing on this hit list are things that range anywhere from five to 30 minutes nothing it's they're not significant things it's not like design a new website it's it's just small quick things but this is my hit list but then what'll happen is as soon as my call today is over and let's say courtney courtney and I are going to go out for the day well maybe she's not quite ready and i have 30 minutes to spare i can grab my hit list and be like oh i can call dad real quick i can do this real quick i can do that real quick and i can knock off that hit list while i've got some gaps in my day and that's how i kind of manage priorities versus distractions that has helped my product productivity significantly just doing that. Um, Jacqueline, can we see your quarterly calendar? That's a good, that's a, uh, I might take a picture of it later and show it to you. Cause I have it all on dry erase boards and I can show you kind of how I lay out my calendar. It's kind of hard to show you from here cause it's not in view. Um, but I lay out my quarterly calendar on dry erase boards and I kind of, I, I, I have my own method of the way I do things, but I'll, I'll take a picture of it and send it to you, Jackie. Um, but uh, that having, I think having that priority list separate from a random to-do list is important. So however you're keeping track of the things you got to do each day, if you can create separation, otherwise what will happen is you can start out your day with a, this is my to-do list for today and your to-do list has got some priorities on it, but then things keep creeping up and what ends up happening is throughout your day, your priority list grows or your to-do list grows. Then you get to the end of the day and you're never done with that list. It's like the always ever growing list. So when I have my priority list here and my to-do list here, if my to-do list grows with just random things, that's fine. That doesn't bother me, but my priority list will be done at the end of the day. And I, my day doesn't stop until the things that are on my priority list for today are done. And then I work through my miniature kind of to-do list as I have time, if that makes sense. Okay. Um, the second thing, just talking about workspace on the theme of workspace is to declutter. Again, I highly believe that clutter in your space is clutter in your mind. So I challenge you just for a minute with your workspace, wherever you have, just to sit back for a second and just kind of look around. And if there's anything that annoys you or overwhelms you or irritates you or distracts you, get rid of it. Like get, clean it up and get rid of it. I love my clean workspace. And my wife will be the first one to tell you if there is clutter in this zone of my world, it drives me mad crazy. 
And I've got, you know, I've got my basement that's right <laughs> over my monitor here. So this basement is always spotless. And I've got two young boys that live down here with me all the time, right? So, I mean, I, I vacuum it every morning. Everything's put away. Everything's organized because when I want to work and I want to focus, I don't want to be annoyed with distractions. So whatever your space looks like, if there's anything that's annoying to you, clean it up and get it out of the way. Uh, so declutter is important. The second or the, the other thing I want to give you just two more things on your workspace is do you have everything that you need to do your business at your fingertips? Like right here, do you have everything you need? Like this is my cockpit. When I sit in this chair, I can sit here from sun up to sundown and I don't have to get up for nothing if I don't want to. I have everything. There's everything that I need is right here. I always come down. I always have I always have coffee and I always have water too. I always have, to have everything from my beverages to my notes. I mean, do you have a stapler? Do you have a printer? Do you have a filing system? Do you have, you know, do you have paper towel if you're sweaty from doing your workout right before going on zoom and you can't get your head to cool down like whatever it is that you need in your space do you have that in your space do you have kleenex do you have a trash can i mean just everything do you have everything you need so think of things that you need to do uh or need to have do you have that in your space so that your space just works for you and i think the main thing for me is that I set my space up not only to be functional, but also to kind of fuel my senses. Does your workspace do that for you? Like it should kind of, you should be able to get into your space and it should kind of fuel you. Like I'm here, I'm ready to do some work. I'm ready to go. Um, things like just having my podcast mic here with me and just all the things just kind of puts you in your rhythm and in your mode of, of getting to work. So uh, Charlotte says, even put in a snack beverage area in my studio. You know, I've been thinking, I thought for a while about getting one of those mini fridges, but a mini fridge would get me in trouble because I mean, the things that I would probably want to put in there are not appropriate for my work day. So, <laughs> but, a, but a mini fridge is a good idea. Um, I have one. It looks like Hello Kitty's. Yeah, when it's a little one and I got plenty of room, I like I could totally, but even if I did a mini fridge down here with just some, but because the thing with me is like when I drink water, it's got to be cold. I don't like lukewarm water. It's got to be like icy. It's got to like hurt my teeth when I drink it kind of cold. So, you know, maybe I have a refrigerator full of just bottles of water. That would be cool. Um, whatever, whatever, whatever that is for you, uh, set your space up so you have everything that you need. And then um, the last one I give you about workspace is are the most important aspects of your business easily accessible in front of mind. So, you know, what that means for me is what's the most important things that I need to be see, seeing and have present in my mind daily and, and are those things at the front of mind? So for example, uh, you can't see them, but right around the corner, my dry erase boards around the corner over there. And that's, you know, so I, when I come down to my office, I come down the stairs. And right when I come down the stairs, those dry erase boards have everything about my business on them. So I have all my current clients. Um, I, I have every single client has a list. I, I have the package they've invested in, the time frame that we're on, the deliverables that are expected, what I'm working on. Um, any deadlines that are noted. So every single client is listed. I have my financials tracked. I have my 90 day calendar list is listed there. Um, I've got upcoming programs that I'm planning. I've got kind of an idea board on there of just ideas, random stuff that I've just been thinking about just jotting down ideas for things that are coming up. So I'll take a picture of this as well, Jamie, I see that. Um, just to kind of show you what, you know, and I've, you know, over the years of me being in business, I've tried a variety of ways of just kind of of figuring out what that was for me and how to do it. Uh, but I'm a very visual person. I, I got to see it, right? So I, I've had binders for my clients. I used to have all my client notes in filing systems in my computer. I used to track my financials in Excel, but I'm like, I need to see it. I, I need to, I need to, I need to see it. So what I do in the morning be, when I come down to work in the morning, I come down my stairs and before I sit in my chair, I stop for a minute and I just kind of look over all those boards and I look over every single person and I look over all the things that are going on. I look at my calendar. I look at where my financials are at. I just, I just kind of take it all in and I just get it all front of mind before I sit down and get to go to work. So it's just constantly marinating in my mind what's going on in my business. 
And so um, for me, like, and, and I've, I've got clients that they love their filing systems. They love their binders. That's cool. Whatever, however that works for you. Uh, it is like a vision board. Absolutely, Charlotte. It's like a vision board for my business. Um, but you got to kind of figure that out for yourself. But, it, but again, I just want to say, are the most important aspects of your business easily accessible in front of mind? So if I'm ever like, oh man, Am I forget? I feel like I'm forgetting something, or I feel like there's someone I'm I haven't gotten a hold of recently. I can just get up, and I can sit here and I can look at every active client that I have, and I can just look through all of them and be like, nope, I've I've got a hold of everybody. I'm good. I'm not forgetting anything. So it's just a, a good, easy, quick shot for me to see what's going on in my world, and that for me is tremendously helpful. Okay, so that's workspace. Just a few thoughts on workspace. All right, questions, thoughts. Anybody else do anything with your workspace that you'd like to chime in or tell us about? Everybody's good. Okay, we're gonna keep going. Second one I'm gonna talk about is your computer. That computer of yours. So first of all, I want you to clean up your desktop of your computer, if that's you. If yeah, you trying. if you if you open up your computer and your entire desktop is covered in icons, it's unnecessary. You've got to file those things, sort those things, have some sort of have some sort of procedure for how you want to maintain your desktop. Um, again, I, I think you know. Again, it's clutter, clutter, and clutter in your space is clutter in your mind. If you open up your computer for as much time as we spend on computers, you open up your computer. If your desktop is covered in icons, it's automatically confusing. And if you're like, you know, if you can't quit, if I can't say go to this folder, go to this place and find that, and you can't go right there and find that, you got some work to do on your computer. So, and that's tricky. It's not easy, uh, but you got to, you got to figure out what your system is for how you, how you track. The only things that I have on my desktop are things that are, um, you know, actual folders that I'm actually working on. And I can show you my desktop real quick. Let me show you my desktop real quick. Just so you can kind of see how I, how I sort things. So let me get rid of this. And my family. So I've got folders for all the things that I get into all the time. So anything, any of these folders are folders that I'm going into on a, on a nearly daily basis. Then I've got my lead tracking templates. And then any files that are out here on my desktop are things that I am currently actively working on. I've got some videos in here that I'm working on optimizing for YouTube. Um, and then these are some of the resources that I go to on a nearly daily basis. These are quick things that I go to, but any, anything that's on my desktop is something that I'm using on a frequent basis. And if I'm not, if I'm not going to it, if it's been more than a week and I haven't clicked on any one of those things, it's out, it's gone and off my desktop. And it actually kind of bothers me to have stuff on my desktop. The other thing I'll use my desktop for is another visual to-do list, right? So if I have something that I have to do, like a, like a project that I have to, let's say I'm working on an ebook for Tasha and that, and that ebook has to be done by next week or something. I will pull that ebook out of Tasha's file and stick it right in the middle of my desktop. So it's there. So every day when I come to my desktop, it's reminding me that I got to get that project done. So sometimes I'll use my desktop as a reminder of, of products that I have to get done. But it, if you've got stuff on your desktop that you haven't gone into in weeks or months, get it off your desktop, put it in a folder, delete it. You know, when's the last time you emptied your trash or deleted stuff off it, you know, doing a system cleanup is just another thing I may have, I, I might have put this in here. Uh, let's keep going on your computer. The other thing about your computer is setting up a digital filing system. All right. So keeping track of all of your notes and all of the things that you're doing and a filing system can be done for a variety of things, you know? So I have a digital filing system. I'll share my screen again. I have a digital filing system, a separate drive just for my clients. So, so I have an entire, entire drive just for all of my client files. And these are all my active current active client files. So clients that I'm actually working on project with right now, if I'm, if I, if I have a client that maybe the contract is over or past, then I'll move them out of this file and into my hard drive just to save it and store it, but it's not taking up this list, all right? So that's where I keep my, my client list or my active client list. I also have my live stream file system. This is all of my broadcasts with notes and you know so if i'm like if if i'm running out of creative fuel and i'm like what am i going to talk about next week i've got these all sorted by date 
So I can go back and say, oh, let me just go back to like late last year and find one. Uh, this is a grid broadcast. Let me just go back to this one. I can open this up. I've got my broadcast title. My starting image is ready to go. My key points are already in here ready to go. I can just take that, save it as my thumbnail, print out my points, and I'm ready to go do a live broadcast on this right now. So I save all of my, every, every bit of content I ever create is saved in this file. So highly encourage you guys that are creating content to start creating a library of the content you're creating because you can, you can repurpose it and you should be repurposing it. Um, anything you ever create needs to be filed in some way. So definitely set up a filing system for all the stuff that you're creating and all the stuff that you're managing. Now, managing clients is different. Um, and you got to kind of figure out your rhythm for that. You know, I keep on my dry erase boards, I keep a snapshot of kind of each client that I have and where I'm at with them. But my core client files, I store in my filing system. Uh, usually what I do too, is I keep a running note, um, like a like a word document note of my client notes. So if I'm having a, if I'm having a conversation with Jamie, you know, Jamie and I will, will go through an hour together and I'll always have, I always have a note notepad in front of me and I'll take notes throughout that conversation and just jot down the things that are on my mind, what we're talking about. And then once that conversation is over, I'll open up Jamie's file, go into her notepad, and then I'll just kind of go through and I'll summarize our conversation of the day, the to-do list and all that stuff into that word document. So it's saved in my computer and then tear my sheet of paper away and throw it away so that my, my core notes are saved where they need to be. And I'm, and I'm not um, having that way when I go back to another conversation with Jamie two weeks from now, I don't have to, I don't have to like, oh, where's that file? Where's those notes? Let me go back and try to find that piece of paper that I was scribbling on with Jamie two weeks ago. It's right all in Jamie's file. Uh, the other thing I'll do sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes if I've had a conversation with someone that's really deep and heavy and there was a there was like a lot that was covered or if the person I was talking to was just feeling some kind of way and I want to make sure I remember that because we've had them, you know, as Charlotte's had him, you know. So what I'll do sometimes is I will go into my notes app of my phone and I'll just send myself a recording of the conversation. So, um, so I'll, I'll go in. So let's say I get to wrap up a call with Charlotte. I'll go into my notes and I'll be like, today is Saturday, uh, April 24th. She had a phone call with Charlotte Stebbins. That girl is a hot busted mess today, man. She is all over the place. <laughs> I love her, but man, what a wreck. Uh, she's got, <laughs> she's got this, this, and this to do. And we talked about this, you know, so I'll, I'll just, I'll recap kind of where she was at, where I was at, what we talked about, how I made her laugh. Uh, however that is, I'll send myself that and I'll, I'll save that recording. And then I can take that recording, send it to myself via email and attach it to that same document that I'm keeping track of all of, all of uh, Charlotte's notes on. So then in two weeks, cause the thing is, is, you know, when you are delete and cancel that, I delete and cancel it, Charlotte. <laughs> um, but the thing is, is, you know, when you're, when you're, when you're coaching people, and, or you're working with clients, you might be the only person they're having those meaningful conversations with, right? So, so their memory on the conversation is sound and it stays there. You, you know, so I'll have a conversation with Charlotte, who's amazing, you know, from nine to 10. And then as soon as 10's done, I'm like, all right. And then I go right into a caller with Tasha. And then we're going to talk about Tasha. And then we're going to go to Jamie. And then we're going to go to Jackie. Then we're going to go to Kat. And then, and then I can do eight or nine calls in one day. By the, by the end of the day, I can completely forgot what the heck Charlotte and I talked about this morning. So you've, you've got to, you know, you got to give, you got to help yourself. And I got in a lot of trouble with myself early on in my business, trying to, trying to navigate this, trying to figure out how the heck do you keep track of everybody. And this is the best way that I've found to do that is to just give myself enough notes and reminders to rem to remind myself where we're at. Because as soon as I listen to a quick voice message for myself or some quick notes, maybe, yep, I remember where Charlotte was at. And, um, and sometimes what I'll do too is if there's some if there's some key things, let's say I had this call with Charlotte and there's some key things that I want Charlotte to be able to work on and remember, I might put in my notes today, in two weeks, ask Charlotte this or check on Charlotte with this. And in some cases, if it's super important, if Charlotte's maybe got a big meeting coming up next Wednesday, that's going to be really important. I'm not going to talk to her before then. I'll, I'll note that in my notes, 
follow up with her about our Wednesday meeting, but then I might put in my calendar an alarm for Wednesday at 10 o'clock, check in with Charlotte to make sure she's good. All right. And so I'll, you know, you can use your devices to remind you of things. You have to do that. Like you just, you just got to remind yourself to do that stuff. And it's, it's hard. It's not easy. Um, but it's, if you can get in this rhythm of keeping track of all that stuff, it's very helpful. That's a great question that, um, Tasha asked, do you keep potential client notes also? Absolutely. Um, so I keep those in a separate file, you know, so I keep my client notes, um, of, you know, all of my current active clients that I'm working with. And if I have a phone call, like if I have a prospect call, I take the same notes that I would normally take with a regular client for a prospect call. I take all those prospect notes. I usually get send my, I usually create a voice message for myself for a new prospect if they decide not to hire me after that call was over. And then I save those things that way. Cause I've had people, I've had people reach out to me, you know, six months, nine months, 12 months after having a prospect call with me and be like, Justin, ready to make an investment. You know, what's going to be the best way for us to get started. And I'm like, who are you? And I don't remember. <laughs> remember what we had a call like when did we have a call you know so i'm like so then i can go into my notes and i can find their name like oh yeah and then i go and i find their notes and i can listen to the voice message like oh yes i remember and i can remind myself and then i can go back into the dm and be like yes i remember you were so excited about being a speaker super excited blah 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 blah, blah. and i can go right into everything about them which is great rapport because they're like wow it's been nine months you remember all that about me like not really but my notes are great <laughs> <laughs> so um yes notes 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 man if you want to really be a professional at what you do you got to get good at uh at taking notes okay um your computer protect your work with a backup system you got to have a backup system so what i do i've done this a variety of different ways my favorite way and what i love to do is i would just went on amazon and i bought a one one terabyte portable hard drive and that's separate from my computer. It's a little portable device. It's not terribly expensive. I can't tell you the price off the top of my head, but it's, I, it's not, it's, I'm thinking like 30, 40 bucks, maybe. It's, it's not bad at all. And it just plugs into a USB. So I actually, I can actually show you this. I actually have this on the back of my laptop. See that? It's stuck on the back of my laptop. I just have it on there with just a command Velcro strip and that's plugged in just the back of my laptop. And so what I do every Friday, every Friday at the end of the day, when I'm cleaning up my week and I'm cleaning up my desk and everything, once I'm done doing everything that I need to do and my, my to-do list is done for Friday, the last thing that I do at the end of the week, every single week is I plug in my hard drive, I grab my entire desktop file and, and drag it over and slide it over to my hard drive and let that thing run. And it takes like two hours and it takes everything that's on my entire system and, and does a backup on my hard drive. So I have a backup of my hard drive every single week. And um, I started doing that, five, I'm gonna say four years ago when I didn't have a backup system and my computer crashed. And I lost like two dozen client folder files full of logo files, graphics, notes, thank God I was still early on in my business. So I didn't have, you know, I didn't have massive, I didn't have massive amounts of work the way I do now, but, uh, but that computer freaking crashed. And I, and I remember I could not get into it. And so I went online and tried downloading a, you know, a backup system to save it. it didn't work. I took my computer to the geek squad and they said, your computer's toast, your files are toast. And so I had like two dozen clients that I had to I had to start over with a lot of their work. Not good. Don't do that. <laughs> so get a backup system some way. And, and the backup system one is one thing. Having a backup system is one thing, but also creating a routine for when you back up is another. That's another separate thing. Because I, I was like, I wouldn't got my backup system. I would do a backup, but then I would just be busy, whatever. And all of a sudden I realized, man, I haven't backed up my computer in three two, three months. And I got, you know, two, three months of new client work that I've created. I didn't back that thing up. So now I just back it up every Friday all the time. And I am nowhere near my one terabyte. And then if I do max the one terabyte out, just unplug it and buy another one. So what? And it doesn't tax my computer. That's the other reason why I do that because the files that I work with are so big. If I keep them all in my system, it, bleh, it just drags my computer way down. So I move that all off of my, uh, off of my hard drive to keep my hard drive flowing smoothly. So that's, that's a good one. Um, 
set up a Dropbox account or OneDrive or Google Drive or some, some, some drive system for large files and for file sharing is a great thing to do. I use Dropbox. I love using Dropbox. Uh, so whenever I'm sharing video files or large, you know, any kind of large files, I like to do file sharing with my clients. Um, so that's a, that's a great way to kind of keep stuff off your system as well. Um, and then lastly, just to update and refresh your software. Just make sure that your computer is up to date. Make sure you got a good antivirus on there. Uh, make sure you're, you're going through and deleting, doing a system delete. Um, you know, Macs are completely different than Windows, but every, every, every system has a, have a, has a method for how you can go in and just do a system cleanup on it. Um, so, you know, I, I, I usually do like a, an official intentional system cleanup about once a month on my computer just to make sure it's clean. Uh, I'll, I'll, sometimes I'll go into my complete hard drive and I'll do, uh, I'll do a search for large files and find like large, like huge files and go through and be like, is this necessary? Do I need this on here? Can I delete it? Can I get it in Dropbox? Can I get it? Can I just get rid of it altogether? Do I need to move it to my hard drive? And sometimes I'll find like a huge video, like a zoom video file. Like this is two hours long as a huge file. Usually, uh, sometimes I'll move that stuff off my system just to keep my system running clean and running smooth. And all of that affects live stream quality, Zoom video quality, all that kind of stuff. Because if your system is loaded and taxed, then when you try to do things like doing a live stream or doing a Zoom call with a lot of people in it, your system will bog down because it's just so loaded up. So it's just good to do that cleanup uh, as much as possible. Okay. That is computer. Let's talk about your phone for a second. So your phone, these lovely devices, first of all, how many of y'all have got like screen, 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 just loaded with apps? You guys got apps like crazy or not too bad? Not so much? Not so much? Okay. Um, I challenge you just to go into your phone today and just look at the apps you've got there and see if you can delete some. Like I do this every, I don't know, every couple of weeks, maybe. I'll just go in here and I'll be like, do I really need this? Like probably not. And I just start deleting things. Uh, so deleting old apps is a good one. Um, downloading apps to maximize efficiency. So if there's any kind of, any kind of um, productivity type apps that you can use to maximize your efficiency, I don't have any like crazy, wild, amazing, life-changing apps that I can recommend to you. I mean, the, main, the ones that I main, usually main for, for productivity is my notes app and memos. I use memos like crazy um, because voice messages to me are the best way to, for me to just kind of capture my thoughts. I do it for ideas too. So if I'm in the car and I'm driving, I don't know about you, but I get a lot of ideas when I'm driving for whatever reason. So I'm driving, especially if I'm by myself, cause I think maybe I just, I'm thinking and I'll get something. I'll be like, Oh, I get this idea. And, or if I, even if it's for Jamie, let's say I got an idea for Jamie. I'm like, well, I want to talk to Jamie about this. I'll just pull up notes app and start up a memo and I'll just talk to myself in the car and just capture my thoughts and memos. So I use memo like crazy. Um, but make sure you got the right apps in the right place, you know, to leverage however you want to use your phone. Um, resetting your home screen can be kind of fun. It's like, it's like changing the living, it's like changing the furniture in your living room. It's like, sometimes you just want to kind of change up your home screen a little bit. Uh, so you can kind of go through and see, do I have the right stuff on my home screen? Are there some priorities that maybe have changed and I want to shift some stuff around? Um, purge your contact contact list can be tremendously therapeutic. I recommend doing that. If you haven't done that recently, <laughs> go into your contact list and be like, yeah, you can go and you can go too. And you can just start popping some of those people off your contact list. list uh, see if there's just people that don't need to be there. Cause I don't know about you. It drives me crazy. If I'm going to like find somebody and I got to sit here and scroll, 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 scroll to get to the person that I'm trying to get to in the bottom of the alphabet. So, um, so I go through and I clean up my contact list every so often. And then the last one and probably the most important one with your phone is set your preferences for notifications. That phone should not be overly binging and dinging you all day long. Um, I'm trying to think. Let me, let me think about my phone for a second. I have very little on my phone that actually makes an audible noise. My phone does. Obviously, the, the, the ringer. If you call me, it'll ring. My text messages make a bing because um, text mess text messaging is it all my everybody's important. You know, has my phone number, so text messaging is on. Um, Facebook Messenger, I have the 
icon, the notification on, but not audio because I get messenger messages like crazy. So I do not have audio messages on messenger, but I do have the little, the little red dot. Like I have a, I have a little, you know, I have a little, you know, red dot because somebody did a messenger for me while I'm on my thing here. Um, my primary email account. So my Justin Kaplan Pro email, that one makes an audible noise. And that, that email is synced to my Stripe and PayPal and all my, all in my website. So anytime anybody pays me a bing and I hear that, um, Facebook is absolutely not audible, audible. I do have the notification. So I got, you know, two Facebook notifications down here, my secondary, which is my personal email. I have notifications on for, but I do not have that audible. I think the only things that are audible is my phone, the actual ringer, text messaging, and my business email. That's it. Everything else is silent. And, um, and even, yeah, I'm trying to think about the ones that actually have actual, just the notifications. Cause I don't know about you, but I hate seeing notifications on my phone. It drives me crazy. So the only things I set notifications for are the things that I need to know if there's something they're waiting for me. So messenger, I need to know, obviously, because I got messages, uh, my personal email, Facebook, I check daily, frequently all the time. Um, not, not much else. Uh, anybody else have a text with then, then weather are the only two I have. Yeah, that's good. That's good, Jamie. Um, the other thing that I that I do too, I was just I don't know. I was talking to my dad about this the other day, and he just loved the idea. Is I actually move all of my icons from my phone to the second page of my phone. So when I lo- so when I so when I open actually open up my phone, the only thing I got down here is is personal email, business email, Facebook, and my app. And then and then if I want to actually go into anything, then I swipe over and that's where my stuff comes from. So if my phone happens to be open or on the computer or, or you know, sitting up on the on the dash when I'm driving or something, it's just there and I'm not seeing all the other stuff. So that's kind of nice. Plus, I like seeing my girl's face when I open up my phone and, and all the apps are in the way and it's kind of annoying. So I, I get them out of the way. So that's phone uh preferences anything else on phone anybody else do the same thing or do anything different with your phone that you might find somebody might find helpful anybody else no everybody's good um, for the icon yep for like the little apps and stuff i don't know how it is on other phones but like on the apple phone you can take and like slide it and they can make a little cell so you can make like a little pocket of stuff yeah like a folder together. right yeah yeah yeah. So I, I actually have folders with mine. Yeah. So like I've got, you know, I've got a banking folder that's got all my mm-hmm. bank accounts and stuff in it. I've got social accounts down here. So Facebook is the only social account that's out. All the other social accounts are in a folder. I got all my photos. So photos, photo apps, photo editors, all that stuff mm-hmm. is in there. Yeah. 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 Put like things nice. together. Yeah. Yeah. Which is nice. Yeah. That's good stuff. All right. That's phone. Let's talk about email. Cheers and good morning to you. Thank you all for hanging out with me this morning. I appreciate you. So your email, how many of y'all got email problems? Anybody want to confess? No? Todd, <laughs> Todd was like, no. Everybody's like, yeah, me. Uh, <laughs> uh, email. So, all right. Let's talk about email. Email is a thing, okay? Email is a challenge. And look at you. Tosh, look at you, Charlotte. It's nice. Where are you today? You're in a you're in a motel. I'm at the beach. <laughs> you're at the beach. That's nice. We're in uh, our timeshare condo. So, email. First of all, when you're a business, you've got to designate your primary business email account. You got to have the one. This is the one that's going to be the one, and. If you haven't done that yet, there's no better time than to do that right now. Now, email is just email is just challenging in general. It'll, it'll always be challenging in general. Um, but you've got to designate a primary account. And so the way I handle my email is I have my business, business email and then I have my personal email. 
So my business email, I, I am not subscribed to anything. That's where my website emails come from. That's where my contact list come from. That's where my clients message me. That is my, that's all my payment processes are connected to that email account. That is my business email account. My personal email account that's where I have like my, you know, utilities from a house, stuff like that. That's where I have, if I ever sign up for anybody's list for anything, I use that email account. If I ever, if anybody ever asks for my email for any reason whatsoever, that's the email that they get. Nobody gets my business email account. If I ever get a message, like if I get a, if I, if I get, if my business email gets put on a list where I start getting like, I start getting like, you know, newsletter type stuff. I usually message the person and tell them this email was not authorized to put in your list. I'd like to know how you decided to put it there because I don't put that email. I don't subscribe to anything with that email. Um, I protect that email like a boss. And the reason for that is because you cannot miss messages that are important. I cannot tell you the number of people that I have seen or heard of over the years that have missed potential clients, speaking engagements, book deals, because their email was out of control and the email came into a sea of other emails and it was missed because it was lost because it just, you didn't see it. So you've got to, you've got to manage your email. Uh, email is so important. I was, and, and I've got people that have got, email inboxes with tens, tens to hundreds of thousands of unopened emails. You got to work through them. I mean, you got, if that is the email account that you need to work from, you got to, and, and I've got other people like Justin, I want this to be my primary email, but I get so much spam. You may need to start over with a new business email because if, if that email address has been signed up on every list ever if forever you're it's so hard to get out of that mess once you're in that mess um so but it's important you've got to have an email account that you can manage if you've got an email account that currently has a notification of hundreds or thousands of emails that are unread you have an email inbox that's out of control and you've got to get that thing under control if that's going to be your primary in email inbox because you, you have to be able to manage the incoming messages, especially as your business grows and you start having potential clients reaching out to you or, or vendors or, or sponsors or anybody that wants to work with you. You've got to make sure you don't miss those messages. So that's super important. Along with that is, is unsubscribe is a wonderful word. <laughs> I unsubscribe all the time. And I'll, you know, both on my business and my personal, I don't have to do too much unsubscribing on my business because I, I don't subscribe to anything, but I unsubscribe to personal stuff all the time. I'm like, why am I, why am I getting this? Why, what, who's, where's this garbage coming from? And I don't subscribe to it. So unsubscribe as much as possible. Um, the third one I just put in here, I just put purge and clean it up. If you've got an email inbox under control, it's going to take some designated time and focus for you to work through it. And that's okay. You, it's a part of doing business. You're going to have to clean it up. So you just have to purge that email inbox and, um, and clean it up. The other thing that I do with my business email account is I have folders for everything. So every client has a folder. Everything has a folder in my, in my business, my business account. So um, what I try to do is, is I, whenever I get an email coming into my email inbox, I try to take action on it within 48 hours, no matter what. So it, it shouldn't stay in my email inbox. It either, it either needs to be responded to or it needs to be um, filed or it can just be deleted. One way or the other. Three actions. Respond to it, delete it, or file it. One or the other. Uh, it shouldn't stay in that inbox. So my inbox becomes kind of a to-do list. Now, do I miss things occasionally? Yeah. Does stuff happen? Yeah. But as a general rule, I really work hard to maintain that inbox and try to not have an email stay in my inbox for more than 48 hours because, because that way I just, I know I'm keeping up with it all. And you know, you know, as well as I do, man, your inbox can blow up fast, right? Uh, it can, it can take off quick. I get, I get probably, I don't know, 20 to 30 emails a day, probably which is not bad if I maintain those within, you know, within, you know, 48 hours. But if I go three or four days without cleaning up my inbox, that inbox gets thick quick. 
and it can get out of control really, really fast. So just keeping on top of that is really, really important. And it's really, really hard to do that if you're getting spam and all that kind of crap on top of it. So you got to get yourself to a point where you have a business email account that you can manage and manage well. Um, Jamie says, the only way I can keep Ken's email organized, he has about 15 new jobs daily that need to be scheduled. They have everything start, yeah, start color coded. Some way to designate those things. So I like it like, you know, if Tasha sends me an email asking me a question, I can respond to that question and then I can file that. I can pull that email out of my inbox and put it in Tasha's file. And then if Tasha responds back, respond back again and put it back in Tasha's file. So I can I can keep up with that. And it's and it's the best way I've found to manage email. So um, folders for everything. That was that one. Email, email, email. Anybody else do anything with email that you find effective or want to share with us? Ta- or Charlotte, how do you keep your email so bossy? Or you just stay up on it? Um, well, I'm bossy. Yeah. Um, the, like setting up the, if this, happens then this happens you know, like if this then, then kind of thing yep um setting up the files that come into the email they'll go automatically into a folder so you can that. set them to do that too that's awesome i love that right on i love it good stuff okay that's emails uh again y'all this is not earth shattering stuff it's just good reminders just good stuff that we need to all be paying attention to so hopefully you're your caption, you know, I might be talking some things this morning. Some of it may not apply to you. That's cool. But just capture, yeah, I got to do that. And yeah, I should do this. The idea, again, is just to spring clean the things that need to be cleaned up in your areas, okay? Um, let's talk about business forms and financials. So business forms and financials is going to be a little bit different for everybody. Uh, one of the things that I started doing several years ago, and I have loved it, is to track my income weekly and monthly with comps year over year. So even if you're, even if you're not making much right now, that's totally cool. Um, but you, I highly encourage you to start tracking it. So a part of what I do on my dry erase boards is I track 12 weeks of income. So at the end of every single week, I just tally up my total overall gross income for the week. And I just, and I, and I just write that number. And I, and I, so I kind of keep a running 12 week view of my weekly income because it varies up and down. Uh, but then also I, I track every single month. So at the end of the month, I tally up my gross and put my gross number on. And then I have a, I have every year at the bottom. So I have everything from the first year I started in 2014, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. I have them all listed in a row month by month by month for 12 months. So I can see every July, what I made every single year, every August, what I made every single year. And I can see that visually. And what, and what's cool about it is especially early on, like I remember in my, I think it was my second year in business. I remember getting into like the summer months and, um, and one of my lowest months of the year, I remember it. One of my lowest months of the year was, it was either June or July. I can't remember which month it was. It was one of the J months. Uh, but I made like a little over $3,000 in the month. And, uh, it, that was my lowest month of that year. And I'm like, man, that was a rough month. I'm like, what the heck is going on? And it started making me, making me nervous for my business a little bit. Like, you know, what are we doing and blah, blah, blah. But then I looked at when I went and tracked and wrote that number down, it was like 3,100 and something. I wrote that number down. And when I looked at the July from the year prior, I had made like 560 bucks. And so I had like a 600% comp year over year. And I'm like, yeah, that month wasn't anywhere near what I was shooting for, but it was significantly improved from the, from the year prior. Right. And then it's again going, you know, when I can see those things at the end of each year, I can look at my comp year over year, over year of year and how my total income has grown each year over year. I can also look at trends. So I can look at throughout each month and throughout each year, I can look at, you know, I notoriously rise up here. I notoriously dip there. I rise, dip, rise, dip. And I can kind of see the ebb and flow of the way my business moves. And then I can counteract it. Cause I remember my first three years, I would, I would have a nice strong beginning in January. Usually, usually January would be a little slow. February and March would rise up. April would be steady. And then May would dip down. And then June and July would go to the bucket. And then August and September would come back up. And I'd be like, and, and, and I know a part of it was, I remember early on in my business, people would tell me, just watch out for those J months. The J months are a struggle. You're going to suck in the J months. So just be aware of that. And I'm like, okay, J months are going to be a struggle. And I accepted that. 
and I and I and I was like speaking it into my freaking life. The J months are going to be garbage. And I remember, you know, my first three years, they were my J- January, June, and July were the worst months of my year every year. And I'm like, bull crap. They don't have to be the worst year. I don't claim that. And so then I'm like, let me just let me just plan this differently. So my fourth year, I decided to I decided to shift how I marketed it and prepared programs throughout the year. And I prepared in the beginning of the year to launch a new program in May and June and carry it through my summer. And that fourth year, my May and June were my two highest volume months of the year. And July was second. All three of them were above November Black Friday, which was crazy. And so it's just a matter of your, it's just a matter of how you look at things. And so, but I would have never been able to adjust to that and, and, you know, adjust my business and my focus if I wasn't seeing it. So I think, you know, I, I highly believe what gets measured, gets managed, gets multiplied. You can't, you can't manage what you're not measuring and you can't measure what you're not looking at. So you've got to, you got to be able to see it in some way. So no matter what your financials are, if you can set up some sort of system, even if it's just creating a piece of paper where you jot those things down and you stick it on a sticky board or you put it in your computer on an Excel file or something, it's just a good thing to set up now. When, if you don't have a ton of volume now, set that up now so you can be tracking it as you go because I promise you it'll be an encouragement to you because you'll be able to see how you're growing. So financials is important. Um, the other thing, number second one on business forms and financials is capturing expenses and maintaining your records for tax season. Tax season sucks when you're a business owner. <laughs> it sucks bad, man. I hate it. Um, in my first couple of years, I was not prepared and it was a nightmare trying to get through tax season. So, so what I do now, the simplest system that we found, cause I hate paperwork. I really do y'all. I don't know about you. That's not my favorite thing at all. Um, I'm just not my, it's just paperwork's not my favorite. I just don't like it, but it's necessity. You gotta, you gotta, you know, being a good business owner doesn't mean that you're just good in some areas. You need to be sound in all areas, except excellent in, in, in some areas, but sound in all areas. So what I do is I keep an envelope system. That's the best system that I've found for maintaining my stuff. So, uh, thankfully, I don't have a ton of overhead and I don't have a ton of expenses. I don't have a whole lot of outgoing. It's just me. I just sit here and work on the computer. So think that, thankfully, I don't have a ton, a ton of stuff. Um, some people have a ton of stuff. Whatever it is, it's outgoing. Whatever you have to be tracking with your expenses and your receipts and stuff. I just keep a monthly envelope that is track all of my business expenses in the envelopes. And I keep those envelopes mo- uh, January through December in my system, I have a local bookkeeper that I work with that comes to my office once a month at the end of each month. I give her all of my stuff. We look at all my, my my financials, my incoming, my expected invoices, all that kind of stuff. She plugs it all into QuickBooks for me and we just manage that throughout the year and then, and then come tax season, it's easy. It's piece of cake because we just, we got all the stuff prepared. That's the best system that I've found for me. Um, everybody's a little bit different. You got, you got to figure out your system, but all I'm going to tell you is, figure out a system because you do not want to go through an entire year of making money and not tracking your expenses and receipts and whatever. And then coming around to tax season and trying to sort it all out in one month. It just, it's a nightmare. It's a freaking nightmare. So I uh, just want to put that out to you. A um, couple of other things with financials is things like setting up your, a business bank account or even a PayPal business account. Uh, a business, a, a business bank account. Uh, I, and I see that Jamie, it is tricky. It's, it's just tricky. And, and that was for me too. I, it took me three years to figure out like, what is a good system that I can do? Because I was trying to do a variety of things that people or other people were telling me to do. I took a course on it one time to be like, how do you, oh, you know, what's a good t- way to manage your books and nothing that they were telling me was just really jiving with me. And you just got to figure out a rhythm that just works with your personality. For me, envelopes work. I can, I can keep track of that. That's easy. And then I just give it to my bookkeeper and that's easy. Uh, we just got to find a system that works for you. Um, but so bank account. So getting an actual business 
bank account is is um it's not terrible you got to have the right forms and stuff you got to have a business license and the right forms and stuff you just check with the bank that you that you're working with to find out what those forms are in your state it's not too bad uh but another good alternative to getting a business bank account if you're not quite ready to go all in on getting an actual business bank account right away is you can set up a paypal business account which works pretty well uh that i did a business bank account for my first uh two years and um and it's it just you got to have debt, you got to have separation between your business finances and your personal finances. So the cool thing about a PayPal business account, too, if you if you're not ready to get a business bank account yet, is you can get a PayPal business debit card. And that's how I operated my business off the first two years. I did all my uh, any expenses incoming outgoing everything was run through that paypal business account and at the end of the year you've got the reports and the analytics and all the stuff that i could just print that right out and it's just like having a bank account it's just easier than getting a business bank account but um it is important to get that set up early on so if you have not yet set up a business account either through paypal or at your bank make that a priority get that done as soon as possible because that is necessary for being in business Invoicing and client payments, you got to have an invoicing system in some way. I've used a variety of different invoicing systems over the years. Um, I, I, I like PayPal invoicing. I also use a program called Simple Invoices. Uh, simple Invoices is just that. It's very simple. I pay 10 bucks a month for it, and it's so easy, and it works spectacularly off mobile devices. And what I love most about it is I can set up recurring payments that auto charge that do not cost me anything to set up those recurring payments, and it's very easy. Uh, so if you're interested in check that out, that's simple. I'll type that in the chat stream for you. Um, this is one I use. This is my favorite one um, that I've that I've ever found as far as an invoicing system goes. Simpleinvoices.io is the link to that. If you want to check that out again, it costs 10 bucks a month, but it's super, super easy to manage. PayPal invoicing is also super easy. Um, I use both for a variety of different things, but um, both of those are really good. Um and then lastly, it's just a file. Just I'm just going to put bills and filing system. So just having a bill, having a filing system to keep track of your business expenses. One of the things that catches me uh, off guard, I'm not going to say off guard, but just kind of, it, it can get me out of a rhythm, I guess, or something is, is not the big stuff that I pay for, but the little stuff all the little stuff, all the little $10, $10 for simple invoices and 15 for Zoom and 29 for this and 14 for that and 12 for this and all these little things that are everywhere. Um, keeping track of all those things. So I have a nice little file or I have a nice little calendar system, one little calendar that just lists everything that auto charges on my card every single month, just so I can keep track of just where my money's going and how. Um, just having having those having those things tracked is important because you start signing up for different memberships and things and all of a sudden you've got you know two three hundred dollars going out of your account every month and you're and it's like where's that coming from and it's all these little incremental things that are hitting every single month and then if some of those things can you can you pay for them annually to save yourself some money and just make it a lump sum annual payment versus all these little monthly payments all the time so working through all that stuff is important just making sure you got eyes on it so you know where your money is going uh, and the other thing too that I've that I'll bring this up as well because it's important is when you go through some seasons, when you go through some seasons where you're in a dry spell or the income's not coming in as quickly as you'd like or the the volume isn't as high as you'd like, the the best way to make more money is to spend less money. And I've gone through several seasons in my business life where I'm like, all right, I don't have a, I don't have a near enough coming in right now. So a lot less has to go out. And, and so I could look right at my, right at my list of all the incremental stuff that I was paying for and be like, you know what? I don't need to be paying for that right now. I can drop that subscription, that subscription. I can cut $200 off my monthly expenses like that just by dropping some subscriptions. And it'd be like, you know what? I can do without a membership to deposit deposit photos right now. I can do without that video editor right now. I can do without, you know, a, a premium prescription to Pandora right now, right? I can just, you can just drop all that stuff off if you need to. But the trick is if a lot of, a lot of people, they don't keep track of all of those things. So then you're like, man, I got to cut down some expenses. You can't even figure out where all the money's going and when. So having some sort of a tracking mechanism to what you're paying for is important. 
and all the little stuff like little apps some of your little apps are charging you through itunes five bucks a month you know ten bucks a month some of that stuff so just being aware of all the things that are charging you uh let's go into client tracking is this helpful for you all the guys just all the stuff just just good 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 sound conversation right um let me show you a couple of things that i use so i'm going to talk about uh client tracking and then i want to talk about how i manage my analytics and then if you guys want these templates i'll give them to you if you can use them for yourself all right so the first one i want to talk about is client tracking so i have a client tracking template this is my lead i'm sorry this is not my client tracking this is lead tracking and so lead tracking is I manage, this is how I manage all of my leads and all of my impressions. So this is an Excel file. And so what I do is any, anytime I'm, I'm establishing a new relationship with someone through my content, through my social content, I keep track of those leads and I keep track as best as I can for the number of impressions that I'm having. So let's say, let's take Aaron, for example, the one on top. So Aaron, I connected to him. I've known Aaron for maybe about a year or so right now. So, you know, I initially connected to Aaron uh, through a Facebook video. You know, so I put Facebook on here as my source of connection. I would consider him a warm lead at this point. Aaron has not hired me for anything. Um, I, I always check the box once I've established a friend, uh, a friend connection on Facebook. And then I put a check box if I have sent him a personal message to messenger, because I, I'll, I don't always send that to everybody right off the bat. Well, once I feel like I've established enough rapport with someone, I'll send him a voice message in messenger. So once I've sent him a voice message, I check that box. And then from here, I kind of keep track with how many impressions I've established with them. So my initial one was live stream the connection that I had with him right off the bat was sound on live stream. So I sent him a messenger right off the bat. That would have been my second impression. He was back in my live stream again. After my second live stream, he went to my website and got a free download. I followed up with him on my free download. He's back in live streams. I had, a, he hit a web contact form after that. He did a free challenge with me. So I'm keeping track of kind of where he's at. So the way I use this is I can kind of go through and as I as I navigate through these impressions with these people, I'll determine whether they're warm, cold or hot, right? So then if I'm in a season where I don't have a lot of contracts coming in, or if I'm looking for some, I'm looking for some money, I can come up here to my sorting and I'll sort this to hot only. And now I've got a list of clients that I would view as as hot clients. These people have had multiple impressions with me. I might even go here and, and see, you know, sometimes I can, I'll put notes in on this person. Um, but you'll see some of these people have had phone call with me, phone call, phone call. So I've had, I've had phone calls with some of these folks. So these are all people that have, have really connected with me. I would view them as a hot lead. And then what I do is it, I'll throw them a bone. I'll be like, you know, I might reach out to uh, Lindy, for example. I might reach out to Lindy and say, Lindy, li listen, girl, just checking in with you. I just want to let you know I've got a promotion running for the next three days only. 20% um, off all of my branding packages. Just want to toss that out to you. Let me know if that's something you'd be interested in. And I would say I, would, I close at probably about 50% when I do that. I don't do that very often. Um, but whenever I do that, I, this is my list. I usually go to my hot list. And then once I get through my hot list, I might go to my warm list. Let me turn off hot, go to warm. And my warm list is significantly higher, right? So I'll go through here and I'll just kind of look through some of these names and I'll be like, yeah, you know, I think, you know, I think maybe Heidi might be worth reaching out to you because I had that phone call with her. That was fairly recent. Let me just check in with her and see if I can get her over to hot. So this is how I keep track of all my leads. Now, is this super easy to maintain? It takes time but it's power. It's so much power in this thing because I mean, you know, I've had people tell me before, Justin, you know, how do you track your social analytics? What do you keep track of? I'm like the number one thing that I track in my business is the relationships that I'm making because I firmly believe that your business will grow at the same pace at which you are developing new relationships. So relationships for me is everything. And so this does take time to maintain and populate this list and to keep track of this list and check in on this list. But these are the, these are my client. These are people, these are potential clients. These are, these will be the people that will hire me next. Not people that just came, ran, ran across a YouTube video and decided to roll on my website and buy one of my programs. 
that's not the next person who's going to hire me. The next person going to hire me is going to be someone on this list. So I maintain this list tightly and I manage that, tis, that list tightly. And that's, that's something that, that is a priority for me. And, and that's a key income. Managing and maintaining that list is a key income producing activity. And it's just a great way to keep track of all the relationships that you're establishing again so you can see them. Because you, can, you come across so many people. If you're doing Clubhouse and YouTube and podcast and Facebook videos and haps and all the things, in a week's time, you can encounter so many people, but then if you don't have any mechanism in place for how, who those people are or where they're finding you, um, by next week, you're going to forget who it was. And, you know, and the other thing too is, you know, I might have like, uh, like this, this week, one of the things I have to, I have to update this this week because I've got some new connections that I have on my list, but like, um, you know, Tasha, if you recall, when we did your interview yesterday, uh, on th- yesterday and Thursday, we had a lady on HAPS. I cannot, now I can't remember her name because I don't have my list in front of me, um, but she joined us on HAPS and she told me on Thursday, she was a first timer. She's super engaged. She came in for my interviews yesterday. She was awesome. She, she actually said in the comments, she'd already been to my website. She needs to go on this list, but I'm all right. So we're not friends on Facebook yet. And I don't have her email yet, but I do have her name and I know I connected through HAP. So I would put, you know, so if I was coming in here to add, add a new person, um, you know, I'll just, I'll just go down to the bottom, bottom of my lists and I'll just come in here and I'll add a new line and I'll put her name, which I can't remember her name. So I'll put her name and I'll put HAPS as a new person. And for, for now I'd put cold. And then uh, I would say, I would say she's got one impression from a live stream. She's got a second impression from a live stream. And then she also visited website, but she has not downloaded anything. So I've already had three impressions with her and, um, and I'm only going to be able to grow from there. So now my mission is I want to get her email. How do I get her email? So now what I'm doing, once I got her name on here, what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll write her name down on a little piece of paper. And I usually have a handful of names and I'll have them on my desk in front of me. So then when I'm doing a live stream, if I see her coming in to the room, I can look down at list and be like, Tracy, what's up, girl, man? It's so nice to have you come in here. I hope you had a great weekend and I appreciate you coming back and hanging out with us some more today. And I'll just engage her and try to really make her feel welcome. And then I, and then, and then, then as I'm talking, knowing that I'm trying to connect to Tracy and trying to get Tracy's email, I'm going to look for any opportunity that I can throughout my broadcast to recommend something on my website to her. Be like, Tracy, you know what? There's something you might enjoy. If you go to my website, go to my free download section, there's a great free download there on your signature offer. It's a great step if you're trying to figure out what your signature program is. I'd love for you to grab that today. Make that a mission to grab that today. Will you please? She'd be like, absolutely. And then she goes and downloads that. And now I've got her email. So now I can populate her email in here. And then I can keep following up from her. So that is powerful, super powerful. Highly encourage you to find some mechanism. I will give this to you. Um, I will. Yeah. And I see that Charlotte. Yeah. So she had visited my website, but she had not downloaded anything yet. And that's why I didn't get her email yet. Um, so that is how I track my leads. Uh, Takara, that's what it was, Jackie. Thank you. It was Takara. So, um, that's how I track my leads. I'll hook you guys up with that form. Uh, I'll post that form in the Facebook group so you guys can download it from there. And then you can, it's an Excel file. Can you guys do Excel on Apple or on uh, Mac, you can't. Good. Um, Because it works. It's got all the sorting mechanisms and all that. It just works really, really well. Okay. The last one I want to show you is my analytics, which I'm going to get out of this. Exit. Hello. What's happening? Oh, save. Yes, save. Uh, Get out of that. Let's go into website and social analytics. So I've been redesigning this one since starting HAPS because I wanted to do things a little differently. So let me just kind of show you a couple of things that I have. First thing that I'm doing um, is this is how I am tracking my content analytics now. And I'm working on repopulating this. So what all I want to see from my content analytics is I want to be able to see what's working, what's not working, what people seem to be most engaged with. So basically what I'm doing with this is this is the title of the, of the whatever content that I shared. And so I've populated just this since just the beginning of the year, mainly with HAPS and trying to get my HAP stuff in here and my podcast stuff in here as well. Um, but basically what I'm doing is I'm putting whatever my content topic was, 
the date that I shared it, the platform that I was on. So these are all HAPS live broadcasts. These are some podcasts that I've got populated in here. And then what I do is I put in here what my engagement was after one day. So this is the number of views after 24 hours. Podcast, that's the number of listens after 24 hours. And so I do that at the end of every single day. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll check on that, whatever that content mechanism was. And I'll put in here, whatever my, my daily total is for the first day. Then after a week is over, I'll go in here and I will populate what the week number is. So I know how many views I got from a week. So for example, with eight tips to develop an effective freemium strategy, I shared that on the 15th of April, it got 91 views initially in day one, and it was up to 158 views after a full week. So same way, you see how these grow, you know, like, so this one, you know, my, my new live streaming platform for half full tutorial got 458 views on the first day, 621, 782, 838, 897. And then what I do is once I get to a month, then I start tracking the comps. So basically this 897 is a full month of that video being out there. And that thing has grown 198% since day one. So, and this is automatically populated. So if this was, you know, 1200 views, for example, it'll automatically populate and say that's 265% growth since day one. So I want to not only track what my initial views are on a video, but I want to track how it progresses and how the algorithm continues to show that video out there. Same with my podcast. I've got my day one listens first week, second week, third week, first month, second month, you know, so some of these you can see you know, it, my podcast consistently are growing around 300% in views over the course of a month from my initial views on day one or my initial listens on day one. So initial listens on day one range from 10 to 20 listens on day one. But every, just about every podcast that I'm doing is, is experiencing just about 300% growth within four weeks. And then after that, it ranges in the hundreds, but it's still growing consistently. So, um, so that's pretty cool. And it just kind of gives me a good idea of what, what my numbers are consistently, what I should be looking for. So then as I post new podcasts, if I have anything that outperforms that average and like, ah, that's a topic that people are really enjoying. Or if there's anything that underperforms that percentage, they'd be like, that doesn't seem to be something quite as popular. And then same with this, I can sort these. So I can sort this from largest to smallest. So I can say, you know, these topics are my most highly sought after topics. And then these ones down here got less engagement than some of those others. So you can see how this would, once you populate this with a ton of content, it really gives you a lot of insight as to what's, what's going on. And I'm only tracking these for six months, right? So I have my first four weeks and then I have a full six month period, which takes me all the way out to that last month. Once I get to there, I have all the insight I need about that about that particular content. And it just, this just helps me identify what I need to repurpose, what I need to expand upon, and then what particular topics may not be as engaging or as interesting as, uh, as some of the others. Questions on that? Uh, I'm looking at, all right, Jamie. So Jamie, we still help our podcasting. How far are you tracking? I think I answered that. It's all done in Excel. That is all in Excel. That's an Excel file, Jamie. So I will give you guys that file as well. Um, Again, I, st I, I started rebuilding this once I moved on to HAPS because I, initially I was trying to track my YouTube analytics, my Facebook analytics, my podcast analytics, and there was all these different things. I was with, with Facebook, I was tracking impressions and click-through rate and all this stuff. And I'm like, I don't need to see all that. I just, I just wanna know what content is getting the most engagement. So again, I told you guys when we first started today, there's a lot of stuff you can track there's a lot of stuff you can look at, but what stuff is the right stuff? For me, it's a matter of, I want to just know what of my content is getting the most engagement, what's getting the highest initial views, and then what is maintaining and, and continuing to get more views as the weeks and months go on. And that just helps me kind of see what, what type of stuff do people really want to see and what do they want to listen to and what's, what's continually getting the most engagement. So Jamie, I think it'd be perfect for your podcast. So I will give you guys that file as well. So you guys can just be populating that yourself with your own stuff as well. Questions on that one. And I got one more thing I'm going to show you. Tasha, is this doable for you? I mean, uh, just for any guys, do you feel like that's something you could do? I think the way you just 
presented it is doable. Okay. I think this that's simple and uh -huh. it's it's easy to understand now creating the formulas that actually make that happen. Yes. That's well, well, that's but, why I did that hard part. The, the formula is there and it's done. So all you do is you just put in your topic. Yeah. Put in, you know, so I what like I that. do, what I do is I kind of, I, I have about, you know, I have about a 30 minute block prior to when I go live every day. So between 7.30 and when I actually go live at eight where I'm here and I'm just kind of getting myself ready. And what I'll do is before I go live today, I'll go on to HAPS and check my video numbers from yesterday's video and run into my file and populate my number in there. Um, and then, and then usually at the end of each week, I'll go in and I'll populate my weekly numbers. And then if there's monthly numbers to put in, I'll punch those in as well, just so I can do it. And I've, you know, I have days where I, I run past like, ah, oh, shoot, I forgot to get that number. But the more consistent you can be about plugging the numbers in, the more accurate of an account, you can really see what's going on with that video and how it's, and how it's working. Um, Jackie, I see your question. Jackie says, do you use Google analytics? I use a variety of analytics. Google analytics is good for website tracking. Um, but because I have a Wix website, Wix has, I love Wix's um, analytic tracking. They have an excellent, excellent um, reports segment, which gives you tons of insight onto your website, visitor traffic. I'll show you all that kind of stuff as well. So let me, um, let me show you this last thing and then I'm going to get you guys out of here today. So this is my social media content tracker. I'll give this to you. And then I have my website analytic tracker, which is down here. So this, I track my website analytics um, on a weekly basis. Okay. So I have, I have every week of the year in here for 52 weeks. And then I have my totals at the bottom. I'm tracking site sessions, unique visitors, which unique visitors is basically people that are visiting your website for the first time. And then I got page views, bounce rate, average duration and revenue. So, uh, page views is the number of pages that are visited on that particular um, website experience. Bounce rate is the, the percentage of people that visit one page on your website and leave. So you wanna get your bounce rate as low as possible. Uh, so my average year to date, my average is a 50% bounce rate. So that's basically 50% of the people that are visiting my website land on one, one page and leave after one page. So you want to get that bounce rate down as low as possible. My average session duration is four minutes and 71 seconds. And then I have $21,000 in revenue just from my website. So the only thing I track my revenue on here for is this, the only revenue this is, this is revenue that is produced by my website unsolicited. So I don't put like, if I have a phone call with someone and they sign a contract with me, that doesn't go in here. This is just website revenue or people actually bought something on my website. And uh, so I like to keep track of basically how my website's working for me. So, <coughs> excuse me, I've got uh, week one through 16 that we're in so far. I got the year because then what's cool about this too is once you're done with this year, you can take this entire Excel file and copy it and paste a new, and you can go right down here for 2022 and keep right on going with it. So, um, so what I'm doing is I'm just going onto my web, onto my Wix website, and every website should have this, whether you're getting it from your website backend or whether you're getting it from Google Analytics. But these are all very common factors for a website. So you should be able to grab these. I'm just grabbing them on a weekly basis. So I'm putting in my site sessions on a weekly basis unique visitors. So on, on week one of January, I had 33 site sessions that week. 22 of those visitors, visitors were unique, meaning those are 22 people that landed on my website that have never been there before. 84 different page views through those visitors, 60% bounce rate, roughly average six minute duration, but I produced $8,600 in revenue that, that particular week. I also put in my um, week tracking here, I put things like I was on vacation this week, this week was spring break. So if there's any skew in my numbers, I can associate it with, well, I was gone or I wasn't doing any marketing or whatever, but I just, I like to keep track of what's going on here. Um, you know, I can see, you know, I can, I can, again, I can sort this larger, smaller. I can look at these were the weeks that I produced the highest amount of website revenue. What weeks were that and what was going on here? Or I can look at the highest number of unique visitors and I can be like this one I had, this was not only my highest size, site session so far this year, but I had 27 unique visitors. That was the third week of January. 
Uh, the first two weeks of January, I did a hard push on marketing, and then I did a free challenge in the third week of January. So uh, that particular week, I was getting a lot of new website traffic. And the funny thing is, is that particular week, I had I had excellent site traffic and I had a lot of new visitors, but I had zero dollars in revenue. But then if I sort this A to Z, uh, how do I sort this back to? Hmm. I sorted that all that way. Let me go to that. I guess just a week four. Let's see week four. Week four, I produced zero dollars in revenue, but then week five, where's week five? Week five, week five, week five. Why don't I see week five? Two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, it's probably way down here somewhere. No, where's week five? That's so funny. I might have to rephrase this. Because if I put this all that way, A to Z doesn't work. Huh. How else would I sort that so that it sorts better? Hmm. I want to think about how I sort that because that may not work to do it that way. Hmm. What if I just put it in chron? Uh, if I did it in chronological order, that too should. Hmm. I want to figure out how I want to sort that better. Um, I want to see your comments real quick. Maybe add a zero in front of the single week number. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, because I want to be able to sort it in order. I mean, it's nice to be able to sort these, you know, like highest to lowest and stuff. But then I want to be able to put this back from 1 to 52. My dad is an Excel genius. I might ask him what's the best way to sort this so that I can go back to a 1 through 52 look. Um but anyway, this just, this just gives me good insight. And again, as I'm tracking my weekly stuff, I can come down here and I can see my year-to-date total. So I can be looking at, you know, if I'm creeping my bounce rate down, getting my average. I want to, basically what I do is I want to get as many unique visitors as possible. I want to lower my bounce rate. I want to increase my average duration. And of course, I want to get my revenue up. And so, and what's nice about this is at the end of the year, I can tally up my total revenue for the year and then I can look at what percentage of my revenue was generated by my website. And that, you know, I can set a goal. I can, you know, I can set a goal and say, you know, I want, you know, I want, you know, 40% of my annual revenue to be generated by my website um, through my services and products that are right there on my site, you know, so I can kind of set goals for what I want my website to do and then, and then see how I go from there. So just gives you a good look. Is that helpful? And the website stuff is crazy. I think I get way more out of my content metrics than I do out of my website metrics, but it still is good to look at it. And you can, yeah, you can pull stuff from Google Analytics and you can pull um, analytics from like your website backend and stuff like that. But what I find is they take forever to load usually. And you usually can only do week, you can usually look at the past seven days, past 14 days, past 30 days, past 90 days but you can't sort it by week. I want to see a running tally of weeks. So I know each week what I'm doing and how my numbers are improving. So that's why I kind of created my own. That way I can look at it that way. If that makes sense. Um, Cat says if week is your head title, you could leave that out and just use that number. Yeah. I wonder if I just make it numbers, but I, I don't know. I, I think it's the ones It captures all the ones, doesn't it? That's the problem. I'm going to stump my dad on that one. Hopefully he's got an answer for that one. Cause that's, I don't, I don't know how you, an O one. one Yeah. I guess that would, that would probably do it. Right. O one O one one and then 10. Yeah. I think that would work. Okay. I will revise that form before I send it to you. That way when it sorts, it sorts appropriately. That way you guys don't have to figure that out. <laughs> All right. So that is forms. Uh, that was an hour and a half, y'all, but that was that was everything that I had for you today. Is that helpful? Just give you some good kind of action points and things to focus on. What questions do you have? Anything, anybody want to add something that you want to pitch out there or just a question for me? Anybody got something? Go ahead, Tasha. I, I just wanted to ask real quick, when we were talking about apps and moving them on your screen, yep. so how do you get them from one screen to the other? How do you move it? So great question. Uh, you're on an iPhone, yeah? 
Yeah. So if I if I press and hold an app, it'll it'll pop up one of the, one of these little guys. It'll give me some options, and I'm gonna say edit home screen. And once I edit home screen, now all my apps are dancing and with all the little negative sign on them. And now mm -hmm. I can grab like DoorDash and I can drag it to the side of my screen and it'll go wherever I choose it to go. And so long as I'm holding that app, and then if I want to put it in a folder, I can drag it over top of an app and it'll open up a folder and I can put it in that folder if I want to. Does that uh, make sense? Yeah, perfect. Got it. Yep. Thank you. No, this is DoorDash. So I got to make sure I got to put this back where it belongs because that's important. There we go. And then, and then once you're done, I just swipe up and it's over. So I don't know how an Android, how that works. Uh, I think most of us are Applebee's. Um, but yeah, good stuff. Anybody else? Questions, thoughts? Anybody else want to drop some awesomeness before we go about our Saturday? I, I think Android is similar uh, in changing your homepage just like that. Yeah. I do have a question about email. Okay. So when you sign up for something and you still get the spam mails, for lack of better terms, yeah. of join this, buy this, and you've already bought it, is there a way, like, before I go into email marketing, what I, I do, what I, if you get an email that you don't like and don't want to get any more of them, you should be able to scroll to the bottom, very bottom of the email, and there should be a link to unsubscribe. That's going to be 95% of it. You should be able to unsubscribe. If for some reason you unsubscribe and you keep getting emails, then I usually email the actual person and say, please remove me from your list. I've already attempted to unsubscribe and I'm still getting your emails. Mm -hmm. um, you will have a small percentage of people that you'll stay on the list and you'll still getting, you'll still get their garbage because okay. not everybody, not everybody's emails will let you get off of them, unfortunately. But my question is, if it's something that I've subscribed to and they send me daily or weekly, say, for instance, Maggie's homeschool thing that she did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, you know, like she sends something every day. Well, another person that I have subscribed to do a, something with, I keep getting um, sign up now, sign up now, sign up now. And I'm like, really? I've already yeah. signed up. That's just, that's what basically what they've created is they've created a sales list and they're not differentiating their leads from their actual clients. They're just blasting their entire email list to see what kind of sales they can get out of it. Okay. And that's just bad business. You know, if you're going to, if you're going to be doing email marketing, you need to sort out who's already paid you. So you're not blasting paying mm -hmm. customers with pay me more. Well, um, it's just a free challenge or something. Yeah. Yeah. So like I have my email list separated from, I've got paying clients. I also have the inner circle in a separate list. I have warm leads, cold leads, hot leads, all separated. So if I have an email that I want everybody to see, I click all the lists and send it to everybody. If I have an email that's going to be more of a salesy type of email, I'll separate inner circle and clients out of that and just send it to leads. You know, so you got to yeah, that's just okay. that. It's nothing that you're doing. It's just bad. It's just bad marketing on their part. Okay, so that was my question because I don't want that kind of stuff to happen if I start an email list. Yeah, no, you. The the important part of an email list is basically differentiating and separating your list so that you know who's who and what's what. So when you're sending emails out, you're sending them to the people that you and that want them and need them, and not everybody. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Good question. Uh, Jackie says, what system do you use for drilling down from high to low level goals? <sighs> Great question, Jackie. What I usually do is uh, I like using notepads for projects. So like I've got, I've got, I've always got notepads on my desk like this, oh, blank ones. So if I'm going to start a project or a big goal or something like that, I usually start a notepad just for that goal. So like if I have a new, like like in the in a pretty near future, I'm going to start one of these notepads for Black Friday this year, where I'm going to start jotting down ideas and thoughts and breaking those things down. And I'll start breaking down through one of these. And, and uh, I use that to keep track of that. Um, but I really use my goal crusher system to break the goal down, which I know you've gone through before, Jackie, I believe, right? 
th that that goal crusher system is how I take a high level goal, process why I'm doing it, break down the steps, and then give myself action plans for what I'm going to do and how I'm going to do it. Um, but I, I kind of like to do my goal crusher process in I, anytime I have a big goal that I'm going after, I work off of one notepad just for that goal, if that makes sense. That's kind of my system, if for lack of better words. Uh, the goal crusher in Excel is good. It's just whatever works for you, buddy. Whatever, whatever your method, whatever your method is, is, is fine. Um, all right, y'all. Good stuff. I appreciate y'all. I know an hour and a half of your time on a Saturday morning is uh, is so valuable. So I don't want to waste a second of it. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed that. Got something out of it. I challenge you to kind of go through the list of what we talked about. Figure out what your action steps are, which things you need to tackle. And, uh, and I hope your weekend is awesome. I will upload this recording to the circle as soon as it's done. Uh, and I will upload the forms and stuff probably later today or early tomorrow when I get a chance. And you guys all have a awesome weekend. Love seeing all your faces. Y'all are amazing. Appreciate y'all. Have a beautiful day, guys. See you later, okay? Bye-bye.